Yes, you guys, how you all doing? In today's News Daily video, I'll be speaking about the future of both William and Pedro. In Pedro's regards, it seems very likely the player won't be continuing until the end of this Premier League restart. I'll be speaking about the future of David Alaba from Bayern Munich, the UCL restart and what this means. Will we be able to register Ziyech and Werner? And to end things, I'll be speaking about four players from our club that have been nominated for the Golden Boy nominees. So we've got some interesting big stories to speak about you guys. However, However, before I get into anything, if any of you were planning to buy any club official merchandise from the store, now is the perfect time. You can get crazy sales of 50% off, 60% off and 40% off home kits, away kits, third kits and training kits too. Now really is the perfect time and as I said, if you were already planning on making purchases, use my affiliate link in the description below and use my discount code NINI10 to get 10% off your order. I know that a ton of people have been using it. I'm getting a lot of positivity. I'm here to help you guys out. So without wasting no more time, we now move on to the first story of the day and that's in regards to the UCL restart. News was officially announced earlier today, you guys. It seems like the tournament will restart during the first week of August. Now, when it comes to us and our game versus Bayern Munich, we know that we have the second leg game to play. However, at this point in time, UEFA still don't know whether the games will take place in Portugal or in the home team stadium. If that was the case, it would mean that we would have to travel to Germany to play against Bayern Munich. And the rematch would take place between the 7th and the 8th of August. When it comes from the quarterfinals to the final, it seems like there will be a mini tournament of a sense, similar to like the World Cup and the Euro. So I can imagine that the marketing guys will just have absolute fun with this. It seems like this will take place between the 12th of August and end on the 23rd. Now, interestingly, UEFA's president, Seferin, did state that there could be a possibility that fans could be allowed to attend the games in Portugal. As he said, they will announce plans closer to that date. Now, before I end with the first story, some reports did suggest that there may be a possibility that we could register some of our new signings in Havana or Ziyech to use for the rest of our UCL games. However, you guys, this won't be happening. And in that sense, I'm gonna sound really mean, but it kinda is nonsensical to even assume that this could happen in the first place. Imagine if teams could strengthen their current UCL squads. Imagine the type of exploitation that might happen. So in that sense, this was never gonna happen. This was never gonna be entertained. And now we move on to the second report of the day. And that's in regards to the latest surrounding Pedro and his potential move away from the club. Now this story was broken by The Athletic and this story literally came out this past hour, you guys. It seems very likely that Pedro won't be continuing on with this season. He's worried about his future, he's worried about his safeties and it seems like he will be moving to Roma on a two-year deal worth 56k per week. Now we all know that we tried to offer him and William contract extensions to help them get through until the end of this current season. However, there are strong fears by players in the last year of their contract tracks that if they were to continue on they could jeopardize their futures their careers because they could possibly pick up injuries now when it comes to that concern this is really a valid valid concern as we've already seen in the Bundesliga how many players have picked up injuries look at Kai Havertz for example now yeah I understand that they aren't big long-term injuries however anything could happen but the fact that there are so many injuries that's reoccurring and reoccurring it's only natural that players in William and Pedro's positions are going to take things very seriously because if they pick up injuries, they jeopardize their moves and they be clubless. So of course, you guys, this is a very strong thing these players have to consider. When it comes to Pedro, he's always been personally a Marmite player for me. Now, I've always said that he was like the pure definition of like one amazing game, one average game and one bad game. And his record kind of sums that up. You know, he scored like a goal in every five games. In 200 appearances, he scored like 40 to 41 goals. And, you know, for me, it really sums up the player because I've always personally believed that Pedro only was great whenever he scored goals, but most times he was a bit too quiet for my liking. Now, I'm not saying that he was a flop, far from it. He was just a decent player, a decent servant. Good luck to him. 
this will be an amazing opportunity for guys like Tino Andrian, who has been playing with the first team, has been training with the first team, has signed a new five-year deal. This is the prime time and opportunity for the player to show what he can do. He can play down the flanks, play behind the striker, play in midfield as well. And I'm sure that Frank Lampard will be relying on him over Pedro throughout the remainder of the season. This story was also pretty similar to how Werner has left RB Leipzig. We all knew that he withdrew from the UCL squad list because of course he wants to join our team, prepare during pre-season and get ready for the start of next season. So for me, this is not a case of Pedro being a snake. Far from it. Pedro and William aren't snakes whatsoever. This is just the realities of the industry and this pandemic right now. And all we can say is good luck to Pedro and I hope he does well at Roma. We now move on to the third story today and that's in regards to the latest developments surrounding David Alaba. Now this story was first broken in Germany and it seems like Bayern Munich will be willing to sell Alaba in the next window. It comes down to the fact that Alaba has not agreed to sign a new contract extension. He has one year left in his current deal. His deal does expire in the 2021 season so naturally Bayern Munich want to profit. Bayern have plans to spend too and if Alaba isn't committing his future to Bayern, this is the best time to sell. Now, we've already seen previous reports linking us with a potential move for the player. There's going to be a ton of interest from Premier League teams. You know, clubs like Man City, clubs like Man United in particular, they could be strong competition alongside us for the signature of David Alaba. Now, if Alaba is available in this window, the question is, do we now turn our attentions to him and forget Ben Chilwell and Tagli Fico? Alaba has been very good this season. He has played in a different role. Most times for Munich, he has had to play as a centre-back and that's due to so many injuries Bayern have faced throughout the season in defence. In that sense, Alaba has been amazing for Bayern due to him naturally being a midfield player. You know, he has those midfield player qualities. He's provided that build-up play and that composure at the back that Bayern have needed. Alaba really is the best when it comes to ball progression and build-up from deep. And it's not a surprise that he translated his fullback game to his defensive game. I like the player a lot because he's very intelligent and that's one thing I constantly look for. How intelligent is a defensive player? What's their positioning saying? What's their discipline saying? What's their anticipation saying? What's their game reading saying? And when it comes to all those attributes, Alaba has them in abundance. Now, Alaba isn't the most physical player, so due to playing as a centre-back, it's been that he's had to maybe improve on certain parts of his game. Not that those parts were bad, it's just that he's got even better at them. What am I speaking about? I'm speaking about Alaba's positional game, which is really important because he doesn't have the physicality. And with how Bayern play using a high line, and because he isn't naturally going to win every single one of his duels, it means that the player, if he wants to win his battles, has to use his brain first. I could imagine Alaba having a great effect for this club. I mean, naturally, he would single-handedly improve that left-hand side. His build-up game down the left would really help with how we overload the flanks too. And he's world-class at linking up with the inside forward. It'll be interesting to see. I'll tell you guys, my personal preference is still Tagliafico. However, as I've been saying time and time again, in this window in particular, there are so many top-class left-back options available that whoever we sign, I think I'm still going to be happy with regardless. We now move on to the fourth story and that's in regards to a potential Man United move for William. Now this story was first broken by France Football and they're reporting that Man United are targeting William as a signing to make. Man United like his experience and due to having a very young attacking lineup, they feel like William would be a perfect complement to their squads. Now, I did actually break to you guys first what the situation was going to be with William and Pedro. That story came out late last night and I'm not saying this to show off. I mean, no. I'm not a guy that cares about clout. That's never been something I've ever cared about. I'm only saying this to remind you guys that you can trust me and during times with so much clickbait and sensational headlines and just lies, plain lies with clicks, I just want to be that reliable figure that you guys can trust. Now it seems like Man United would be able to offer William a three-year deal he wants. However, and this is my opinion right now, William prefers to stay in London. 
I guess United would be a last resort. You know, William has family here, kids and a wife who prefer London life. And that's why William is more open to potentially moving to an Arsenal and even Tottenham if he had to. Now that Pedro has confirmed that he won't be playing any part until the end of the season, it seems like William should be following very soon. As I told you guys in that previous report, whatever William does, Pedro will do. And whatever Pedro does, William is going to do too. As I'm stressing, we cannot call both Pedro and William snakes because during these unique times, it's only fair and natural that players, you know, they have their responsibilities, they have their family life, they need to earn their wages, so they need to care about staying fit before they sign for their new clubs. And to end with the final report today, you guys, I'll be speaking about the Golden Boy nominations. Now, we have four nominees from this club. They are Callum Hudson-Odoi, Tino Andrin, Ampadu, and Billy Gilmore. Now, when it comes to Hudson-Odoi, naturally, he would be part of this list. Injuries have really affected what he could do this season. Hopefully, next season, he does have a bigger chance at potentially going higher up in the rankings. You know, in the case of an Andrin and Ampadu, you know, Andrin has a big reputation across Europe. Before he signed his five-year deal, you guys, he had a ton of interest from Dortmund, clubs from Germany, France, and from the big boys in this country too. So it really just sums up how great the player is that his reserve games, because he's barely played any first team minutes, have been on such a high level that he is noticed for what he's doing in Europe. When it comes to Gilmore too, I can imagine that next season he's going to shine even more. He could even shine as the restart happens too because I imagine Lampard will turn to him a lot more after his amazing performances against Liverpool and Everton. And it's a similar case when it comes to Ampadu. I mean, naturally Leipzig had title ambitions. I think they're completely done now. Bayern Munich won the league there. Ampadu didn't get too much game time. I'm personally hoping he does stay at Leipzig, but it seems like he will be returning back and possibly looking for a new loan club once he returns. I think my only question is, you guys, out of all these four nominations, how was Reese James not nominated? It doesn't make any sense to me. For me, he is our young player of the year, one of our best players, one of our most consistent players, most effective players this season, and he wasn't nominated whatsoever. It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever you guys absolutely crazy but you know how it goes if you're asking me the three favorites to win that award is going to be between harlan sancho or alfonso davies but anyway you guys that's going to be me for today remember to like comment and subscribe i've released some big videos yesterday i released a five chelsea premier league restart predictions and today i released some exclusive news surrounding kai havertz and the details behind the negotiations it's happening, you guys. If you want to find out the details, you know where to go. And at that point, I'm going to wrap things up. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm EFC. This is Blue Lion CV. I'll see you guys later with some more videos.